Right, so hey everyone and welcome back to another budget photography video. So professional cameras, they're not cheap. They're not, they can range between about five, six, seven thousand pounds. What if, what if you brought a professional camera, but cheaper? Let me introduce you to the 1D Mark IV, the predecessor to the 1DX line with 16 megapixels, a 10 FPS burst rate and a magnesium alloy body. With one huge downside to it though. Let's go find out. So, as I said, this does have one big problem. Well, actually it has two big problems. And one of them really depends on you, the user. The other one, not so much. First one is its size. This is not a small camera body and <laughs> it's not very light, neither. It's magnesium alloy, you know, it's, it's a professional kind of press camera. This is the kind of thing that you get when you're photographing a celebrity when they least expect it. And it's not quiet, neither. Even in silent mode, compared to modern cameras, it's, it's, it's not bad, but you do then lose out on the high burst because, well, you just take one picture and that's, that's it. Just one. So you better hope you get it because if you miss it, you're screwed. So before I go to the stuff that I do like about this camera, almost falling over, is its size actually, believe it or not. I really like the size of it. It's really nice in the hand. Now, yes, it is heavy. You have a vertical grip and a normal horizontal grip and they're nice, big, full grips. We have a nice, big battery, a really big battery that will last you the day. Now, we do have a CF and an SD card slot on the back here. It's nice to have dual recording, but you need to find the right card. And so far, I haven't actually found one. Well, I, I found one, but it's only been, uh, it's only been a, uh, ugh, a four gigabyte SD card. And I can't use the CF slot, which is a shame really, because would have been nice to have dual recording, it is what it is. Now we do have one over 8,000th of a second. So we do get a nice amount of burst. Now, because obviously I am using a raw format at 16 megapixels, the photos are decently big. They're not gonna be small. So this four gig card does fill up after about 100 and 130 shots. But if you pick your shots right and wait you should get a good shot 16 megapixels still looks really really rather nice now you're not going to be you know zooming in on that picture let's face it because you're just you're just not 16 megapixels is not very good for zooming in it just isn't i'm sorry it's not maybe like a, a small crop, a very, very small crop, but nothing spectacular. Now, as I said, this does have one big problem and its biggest problem is its low liability or correction, its lack there of low liability. Anything past about 32, 4,000 ISO is going to look absolutely horrible. Just horrible. It just will. I would not recommend going past 32,000. Thousandth of a second? <laughs> going past 32,000 ISO because it's just not going to look good. And I just triggered that by mistake. But if you can find good lighting conditions such as this, what we have today, then yeah, definitely. This camera is going to do really, really good things. 
especially with what an ISO of about 800 maybe and have a look at that yeah you can get some decent pictures now because this is an older camera you are going to have access to the EF mount meaning a whole wide variety of ice cream men not today meaning a whole wide variety of lenses cheap decent lenses this is the 70 to 200 that i picked up a while ago and together yes this is not cheap i'm going to be frank together these are about 800 to a thousand pounds because they're both about four to five hundred pounds each but if you are able to save up for both of these you've got a fairly decent beginners setup to wildlife photography you've got that decent burst you've got a decent amount of megapixels you've also got a nice variety of lenses that's the most important thing if you can invest in your lenses that is what you want forget the body buy the body cheap get a decent body and buy some beautiful glass some really nice beautiful glass because even now I enjoy using this camera the pictures are typical Canon colors and that's just just nice it really really is really nice and it kind of begs the question what's the point in getting a camera of today if this one does your needs you know there is a lot of wind i don't know if you guys can hear me but it should do i've got a nice little dead cat on here so you should be able to still hear me but that's what that's what people need to realize you shouldn't get a new camera because it's the new camera get a camera that suits you a camera that does what you need it to do not what i need it to do what you need it to do if that does mean buying a new camera then yes by all means buy a new camera i've done it and i've gotten some slack for it but it's what i need now you do have video mode which is a little bit questionable with a camera like this that doesn't have autofocus in live view meaning you're not going to have autofocus in video it also doesn't have ibis no in-body stabilization. This is not really a video-centric camera. This is a photo camera with video features. Now, why it shoots video, I don't know. It shoots 1080p at about 24 FPS, which isn't gonna look right in this frame rate because I shoot in 60. But nonetheless, you can shoot some video if you really really must i don't know why but you can although on the plus side i guess you will get nice canon colors in your video which kind of is a benefit i suppose but yeah i wouldn't really recommend it it's gonna be all shaky and horrible now yes you can get a lens that has its own stabilization but they can be more expensive. And even this L lens, for some reason, doesn't have lens stabilization. I don't know why it doesn't, it just, it just doesn't. Even my 300 mil has stabilization. <clears throat> and something that is missing from a lot of, well, it's missing from some mirrorless cameras is this, a removable eyepiece. I love this thing, right? I don't like the eyepiece. I don't, because I have glasses. It gets in the way, Canon. Remove it from your new cameras, or at least let us remove it. Let the user remove it. We can't remove it on the new ones. Why not? Please let us remove it, Canon. I'm asking nicely. I won't ask nicely again. Thank you. 
So yeah, we can actually fully just remove the eyepiece if that is something that you want to do, if you have glasses like me. And we also have, if you want to do long exposures, we can stop the light from getting into, in from the eyepiece because of that prism. We have a little catch just here and it closes up the eyepiece. Let's um, zoom that in. Look at that. A nice little, nice little shutter for the eyepiece. Now on most modern mirrorless cameras, this isn't really a problem because, well, the eyepiece is an EVF, whereas this is an OVF. So light leakage is not very common, to be fair, but it is possible. It's possible. Now, to go along with that crappy movie mode, we also have a mic input. Yes, we have a mic input. Don't know why, but we have a mic input. And this is what it sounds like. Mic input of the 1D Mark IV. How does this sound? Does it sound any good or does it sound like absolute crap? And then getting away finally from the video features, we have the nipple. We have the nipple that they got rid of in the EOS R that actually I don't really use that much. I prefer to use this dial here, this dial here, or on the new ones, touchscreen, but I do prefer to use this, this wheel here. I don't really use many buttons on the back of even this camera when I had this camera as my main camera, but a lot of Canon users do like the nipple. We have the nipple. It does have lots of buttons. To be fair, I'm kind of running out of things to say about this camera, really. It's, that's the problem. It is a decent camera. There isn't much more to say about it. It's got 16 megapixels. It's got a 10 FPS burst rate and, you know, don't go over 3200 or 4000 ISO. It's a decent camera for the price. That's all I have to say. It's a decent camera. Anyway guys, thanks for joining me in this video and I'll see you in the next one.